at some point in life, we've all come across the age-old Ghanaian proverb that says, if you educate a man, you educate an individual, but if you educate a woman, you educate a nation. Yeah. In this week's movie review, we look at the Cameroonian The Fisherman's Diary. In The Fisherman's Diary, we're introduced to 12-year-old Eka, who was inspired by the life of Malala Yousafzai, who we all know globally for her advocacy in favor of the education of young girls. Now with Eka, she finds herself um, going against um, cultural beliefs that young girls shouldn't go to school and rather young boys. And in doing this, she also betrays her father. It's very interesting because it's very relevant to Cameroon. Um, we know that currently, you know, the government is making strides to try and educate young girls in the country. However, the challenge is cultural beliefs that still um, are ingrained in, you know, the society within the country where young girls are still being prevented from going to school. They're being raised to learn how to take care of the household um, because it is common that young girls from the age of 15 going upwards are then handed to marry. Um, it has been very enlightening, you know, because it's like, oh goodness, in 2021 we're still being challenged in this way, you know, as girls in society, we're still being challenged. And also there are countries in um, parts of Africa that still practice this very thing of preventing young girls from going to school. Um, and to see, I guess, in the story, you know, being reminded of what Malala went through and also just how much of an inspiration she still is today is quite a great reminder, you know, because the challenge still persists yeah. in many countries. Um, <coughs> what are your thoughts on The Fisherman's Diary? It's, it's quite interesting. It's quite interesting. And it also goes to show that, I mean, Malala is from Pakistan, you know, and Eka, Cameroon, and she's just from, a, she's just a village girl. There's no, there's hardly any, an access to television or radio, but, you know, the power of information, mm. it reaches the far corners of the earth you know, of the world. So I I enjoyed it and it's it it's interesting. It's interesting. Like it's way too sad but it's also way too inspiring. So mm -hmm. it's it it pretty much puts a juxtap it puts you in a juxtaposition, you know, where you don't know how to feel about certain sentiments. Even sometimes you would feel like, okay, is it about change? Is it about growth i don't know but it's it, it it sparks that conversation within you so i just i enjoyed it you know what, what do you think of the storyline i was actually very intrigued because of i think the flashback to the dad's relationship with um eka's mom so the mm. dad solomon and his relationship with eka's mom and seeing how him experiencing his daughter pushing back and wanting to be educated just um, you know, yeah. triggered memories of the kind of fights that he used to have with his wife when she also wanted to be educated and she was highlighting also to him that it's also important for their daughter to be educated, you yeah. know. Um, you can't prevent her from gaining access to that kind of opportunity. Um, I think the, you know, Eka's journey is very inspirational. Also seeing her dad being in a position where he's um, in conflict with the situation and what he also wants for his child, you know. I think mm -hmm. when I first watched it, I was like, why would this man want to prevent his child from being educated so that she could have a better future, especially after losing her mom and him being the only parent that she has. Mm -hmm. Then to also see him not want to marry his daughter off, it's like, okay, but then what do you want? You don't want her to be educated. You don't want to marry her off because she's too young. Then what do you really, do you just want to keep her so she continues to help you mm -hmm. as you fish? But then what happens when you die, mm -hmm. you know? So for me, it just also made me think about that, that, you know, um, this is not just a straightforward, a young girl's being prevented to go to school because it's part of a belief system. I love how they've, they've made it a little bit more complex, you know, they've added layers to the story mm. um, because that also makes it very relatable. It makes yes. it more real, you know, and we don't just look at it as another story of, you know, women empowerment taking place or girl empowerment and, and almost, um, 
like linear understanding mm. you know it's like things are more complex and so even as us you know Africans who have access who have opportunities that we're seeing other young girls across other African countries not having we shouldn't think that the experience is linear mm. you know there are many complex complexities to it yes. um, so it was very interesting for me in, in, in that sense you know yeah I, I agree completely agree with you I mean man the story it's it's quite it's something else I enjoyed it I, you enjoy it um, like also I just love the fact that yes we might see it as that the dad is not doesn't want Eka to have a good future but he's also teaching her business how to sell you know that's a, that's a very crucial skill when you want to be an entrepreneur but he, he instills in her the, the, the aspects of how to handle money, what to do when, you, when you're in a situation where you need to negotiate, you know. There are those certain skills that are imparted to her. Yes, we might not see them, but later on in life, they will come to fruition, they will, they will manifest, you know. Um, but that does not mean that education is not important. It just means they go hand in hand, perhaps the dad. I think the, the, the whole movie is based around change management. You know, where dad is used to traditional man means of, I'm a man, I need to provide, the woman must focus on the home, that is it, mm -hmm. you know, and no child of mine is going to go to school. But let's understand that even, even though you, you do provide, but also be willing to learn and accept change. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a whole conversation towards that I want, like, I feel like it's sparking and it sparked within me that conversation to say, they love each other. Mm -hmm. They love each other. Like it's a father and daughter bond that is quite strong. I believe that's what I saw in the movie. And yeah, the, there are those challenges where child wants to go to school, but dad does not understand this whole change. You know, he only sees the mother through this new behavior, and I don't know how to handle that because the mom is gone now. Yeah. Um, what for you would you say was your favorite scene or best scene? Um, my favorite scene, you know, when you, uh, it's when the uncle Lucas, Lucas, <laughs> that man lives in debt, you know, and you know, the truth always comes out, whether you like it or you don't, it'll always come out. So when uh, Solomon found out that Lucas married off his daughter just to pay off his debt, you know, and he he literally like he stood up, you know, and well, m a lot of times men get physical, you know. That's 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 the ultimate resolution for a man, you know. They get physical, and Solomon literally beat up Lucas mm. in 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 fighting for his daughter and fighting for what is right, you know. It doesn't it doesn't mean that when an injustice is 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 served, men just sit back and relax, but there are those things where men do actually stand up for the right thing. I just love the fact that he stood up for the right thing and he regrettably so, perhaps guilt conscious got to him, but he stood up for what is right and he stood up for his child, mm -hmm. you know, which is something which she wanted from the beginning, but she, could, she didn't get it, but ultimately she, she got it. For me, it was really just seeing Eka outside of that classroom, <laughs> peeking in, you know, yeah. doing, counting on her fingers, you Do know, it. trying to keep up with the other kids. I think for me, that was very powerful mm. because this is a child, I'm assuming, who never really got an opportunity to go to school. And just from being outside the classroom, Lord knows what grade, you know, class was being taught. Mm. Um, and she just caught on, you know, she was self-taught, you know, she was so driven and she was just so hungry to be educated that she um, trespassed, you know, into the classroom in order to keep up. Um, mm. I think for me, yeah, that was really it's like a, an incredible you. scene. Yeah, because, you know, you, you really are reminded of the extent to which someone will go to achieve what they want to achieve when they're really like driven and motivated mm. and yeah they desperately want you know mm. what they want you know um and she wasn't hurting anybody so that was really really interesting for me mm. yeah i would rate it um i guess four and a half out of five <laughs> yeah i would rate yeah. it four and a half bulldog sticks out of five yeah i would give it a five 
I, I agree with it purely because of why it, it how it exposes that information goes a long way mm -hmm. and that accessing it you just have to go the extra mile you know not everybody's gonna bring anything to you on a silver platter you have to work towards getting what you want you know mm -hmm. that's why i'd give it a five and how inspiring the movie is you yeah know? Mm -hmm. so that gives us a total average of four and a half belt and stakes now if you've also seen the fisherman's diary definitely let us know what you think about it leave us a comment down below and if there's a South African series, film or documentary that you would like us to review and those featuring Africans in the diaspora, let us know in the comments. I'm Gomo. And I'm Dumi. And this is the Bolt Eye Review. Thanks for watching.